now. Good. Uh, welcome, everybody. And um, thank you all for chiming in. We right now have uh, about 90 some odd people online, I believe it is. I can't get to it right now, but 90 something people online. Uh, so thank you all. Um, I do want to thank Volvo for sponsoring our LA Roadrunner group and also ASICS for uh, all of our clothing that they give us. So thank you, Volvo and ASICS. Um, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of the LA Marathon. Basically, take the Rose Bowl half and multiply it by two. Um, <clears throat> the former race director, a guy named Nick Curl, who created the Stadium of the Sea course, told me many, many years ago, probably like 10, 11 years ago, whatever it was when they first did it, that in order to, to call it the LA Marathon and still go to the ocean, obviously we're going to Century City this time, they had to go into downtown LA. The problem with downtown LA is it's a giant gully. It's kind of like the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is in a giant gully. Downtown, same deal. So we, and, and let, well, let me show you some charts. Uh, this right inside the stadium where you were looking before on the, the closer map of just the stadium, we're running from that starting line immediately, immediately. The first mistake most people make the, is the first step they take across the starting line. Rose Bowl half, you had about a half a mile before you go up, right? Then they start making a mistake. They're going up too fast. You take, what is it, five steps, if even, out of the starting line. And right in this area here, you see this kind of curved area inside this gray area is the stadium, right? The parking lot and all the stadium. Right in that curved area, right in there, it's all uphill. It's all uphill. There's Then you go out of the stadium gate and right in here, remember last Saturday, we, we took a picture down here on Stadium Way and you, we were, the background of the picture, we were looking up at the stadium gate. Well, right here is the top of that hill. We were looking up that hill, right? but you got all this way uphill. So people start out, start out from the beginning, screwing it up. Heart rate is too high. As Sherry mentioned, your breathing rate is too high. Your breathing rate is indicative of your heart rate. Your heart rate goes up more or less with your breathing rate. They don't really start together, but at any rate, it's really indicative of what your heart rate is doing. Your heart rate governs the amount of fat versus glycogen you use as your heart rate is going up and up and up. Your fat consumption is going down and down and down and your glycogen consumption is going up and up and up and up. You have a narrow reservoir of glycogen that you use more at higher heart rate, right? So the higher your heart rate, the more you're tapping into that limited reservoir of glycogen, it comes from carbohydrate. That's why we take gels, it's mostly carbohydrate, replenish glycogen, right? I'll get more into that later. So um, heart rate is indicative, listen to your breathing rate when you're going up that hill. Will pace, yes, I'm gonna show you different paces every mile, the whole thing but will pace alone really do it? No, that's only a third of a mile. Then you're plummeting downhill. All of this, there's a little roller in here that goes up and then down, yeah. But all this is downhill and then you're still, whoops, I'm sorry. All this is downhill, Santa Monica Boulevard, this little curve from one to two, all that is downhill. Then at two, you can't really see it flattens out going through Chinatown but all of that is downhill. So a big part of that first mile is downhill. So when you see my chart, when you see that chart, that wristband, half of that is uphill, half of it is downhill. 
So you're going to really need to like even that out. Got it? Um, my wristband does even it out, but I mean, going up that hill needs to be really slow. And then coming down the hill can be a little faster than race pace. And you'll see the time, the total time for your first mile on that pace chart when I get to it in, in just a little bit. But you got to remember, there's your first mistake right out the bat, right out of the gate. You're going up a hill. Their heart rate way too high. They're depleting glycogen right immediately. They come flying down this hill. Their heart rate is still too high. They hit mile two and their heart may, may level out a little bit when they get down a race pace going through Chinatown. But man, they've already dumped. How long does it take you to get from mile one, zero to mile two? All that time their heart rate was too high. 10 minute mile pace, that's 20 minutes. You got about 80 minutes of glycogen. You just threw away a quarter of your glycogen. A quarter of your glycogen. In other words, you are a quarter of the way to walking and hitting the wall after two miles. Got it? Mm -hmm. That's huge. Two miles and a fourth of your glycogen consumption gone? That's huge, okay? So, as Sherry said, listen to your breathing. It's so critical to not just breathing, but glycogen consumption. Got it? So, okay, so we come flying down this hill. I'm thinking, you know, early in your race, you know, Jeff Galloway always says run, walk, but for everybody, um, your first two miles really need to be the slowest miles of your race. Just to save glycogen, maintain glycogen, save it for the end. You're going to notice there is a negative split. <clears throat> we are using higher intensity. I don't want to say speed because some places are way slower. Um, we are using higher intensity in the second half of the marathon than we are using in the first half of the marathon. Um, Miguel Magana has a pace group that's entirely based on negative split, the NS running team, NS meaning negative split. It's a really good thing to do. That's how pro athletes do a marathon. They don't go until they burn out and walk to the finish line or, or jog and run and whatever to the finish line, burned out, dying. Um, that's not how to do a race. So, okay, we got you to mile two. Um, and I'm gonna show you, let me show you a little bit of elevation here. I got our elevation chart right here. Look at that big uphill and look, here's five miles. It's not the best elevation chart, but look at this right here. Um, and I'll show you on our, our pace chart. I've charted every, uh, the LA Marathon has charted all the elevation, but they have this kind of general thing for us to look at. And it's a good visual. Look at that hill. That's not even, what is this, mile one right here, you're going down. That's probably around mile one where my hand is. But what is that, like a third of a mile? You have like a third of a mile severe uphill. That's why people burn out by mile 20, 21 over here, mm. right? Is they've already started killing themselves, okay? I cannot nail that home enough. Um, look at mile four. And then mile five, you got two of them right in this, this these big things. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, so mile two, you can't really see this because the two dot is in the way of the route. But we do go a little bit north uh, and uh, then on Alpine. Alpine is right in here. And then this is all Chinatown, the Chinatown gate we go underneath. This is all pretty flat. So I'm suggesting maybe a hair below race pace, even in here. You know, you can get on mile one, this downhill, you can get a little faster than race pace. The problem is, is if you're in a, a corral too far ahead of the game, people tend to get caught up in the stream, the flow of people. Don't go with the people, go with yourself. Um, and your pace group, 
hold back, let them go by the first several miles of the LA Marathon, especially on Temple of Mile 5, we'll talk about. But so you're a little faster than race pace going down this nice long hill, mile and a quarter downhill. You're going down into downtown. Then a little around Chinatown, maybe a little below race pace. Save the glycogen, save the glycogen. Let people, the mob, pass you by. Let them go. You will see them later. Mile two, you're, you're going over to mile three. Um, and then right after that, right after that, let's look at mile three here and your elevation. Right after that, you hit, this is the, um, actually, let me show you on the map. This is the, um, what is it? The, the uh, Disney Hall. The Disney Hall is right at the top. You come down this way, you go up, you go up, I think, the, yeah, this is Third Avenue right here. The Disney Hall is over here at the top, right? So you go up this hill, which is third. You can't really see it because this big number four is there. Then you go up the rest of the hill to the Disney Hall. And the Disney Hall is right at the Disney Grand. corner. And then you take a right turn on Grand and it levels out. So you got this as the first part of the hill on Third Street. Then you got this as the second part of the hill on First Street. The design by Nick Curl was to give you guys a break. So you got a little, you know, bit, it's slight uphill, like Ocean Avenue is kind of like uphill, but it's not much. It kind of gives you a break between third street uphill and first street uphill. It's the same hill, got it? So really, really, really slow it down. Run walkers, your watch, is at this point, if it tells you to run, it is your profound enemy. It is trying to kill you. Got it? Run walkers, don't go by watch. Not in that area, especially going up third, going up first street, that one hill to the Disney Hall, that's the same hill, ignore your watch. If it tells you to run, you know, you can listen to your breathing. And even, you know, runners. Um, I once had an 8.30 pace group going up Temple doing a run walk. 8.30, that's a 3.42 finish time. And they walked a lot of it. And they finished at 3.42 right out. They were a minute off, actually. They were like 3.43 or something. Um, they nailed it. Now, later on, we learned that was like 10 years ago. It's the first time that we, any of us ever did this course. They, they kind of just jogged it slow, the 830 group. Uh, runners do run walk. You know, groups five through nine do run walk. Walkers, listen to your breathing. Lindsay and you guys and John and, and Jose, all of you guys, um, Listen to your breathing, Linda. Um, I, as you're walking up Temple, as you're walking up this hill to mile four and beyond up to the Disney Hall, um, if you start listen, hearing people around you breathing and you start breathing harder yourself, stop. Just stop. Keep your feet moving. Just shuffle, you know, pick your feet up and put them down like one inch off the ground, just up and down, really easy. And just stop. <laughs> um, let your breathing rate come down and then walk again. Got it? Uh, run walkers, way more walking than running. Listen to your breathing. These are two of the most critical points, even the first third of a mile. Except the problem with the first third of a mile is your heart rate, won't, your breathing rate won't be going up for a, a, a bit because you're already just starting. You're at, you know, zero. You're at not rest, but you're at standing heart rate. You're just standing there for like 40 minutes or whatever it's going to be. Um, by the way, I should mention, it looks like uh, temperatures on Saturday are going to be really pretty good. Uh, similar, I think, to the Rose Bowl half. Um, let me get a bit. Uh, let, right now, LA weather, Sunday, I'm looking at it right now. 
Yesterday, it actually said a high of 69. Today, it is saying a low of 53, a high of 70. So that's the high of 70. So the last, you, you know, the walkers, you guys, it's going to be sunny. Supposedly, you guys may get hit by like 70 degrees, but um, only till toward the end of the race. Um, so walkers, you may have to slow it down toward the end. It's, you know, keep drinking, taking in fluids, make sure everybody, make sure that you're taking in carbohydrate. We'll get into that in a minute and sodium minerals. Um, but it will be a rather cool, comfortable day. You may want to take a garbage bag, cut a slit in the top for your head and a slit on the side for your shoulders, just to keep yourself warm. You can tear it off and throw it away. It's a garbage bag. You don't care at the price. Um, at the starting line, just it's 55 degrees when you're standing there can be a little chilly in the morning. You don't want to lose energy at the starting line. Let's continue on. Yeah. On, yeah. on Grand, this street kind of going up here is fairly flat. You'll, you'll feel pretty comfortable. I want everybody to look up as what's in front of you. All the way in the background, you will see the nicest view of the mountains. I know this has nothing to do with the technical elements of the course, but just look up and take in these nice view of mountains, okay? It's gonna be a clear day, enjoy it, enjoy the scenery. Then we take a left turn, we go zooming, not zooming, wrong word, we're holding back, we're going downhill, big downhill, just before mile five. Here's mile five, right there. You see that drop? That's a pretty big drop. It's about as big a drop as what you just went up, almost, maybe not as big. That's probably about a quarter mile drop. You know, the, the music center, the, you pass the music center, you pass, what's that big theater on the corner? Who cares? Anyway, you round the turn, you take a left turn on Temple, and you are going down that big hill right where my hand is. Um, but as soon as you go underneath that overpass, call it out to everybody. Start saying, okay, let's slow down more and more. Let's slow down more and more. Run walkers, you, if you're running, slow down that run, slow down that run and then walking. And then everybody starts walking or jogging up, no running hard, even group one. And you'll see in my pace chart, group one has a pretty good uphill pace, but even they are gonna be slowing it down on this uphill. Look at that uphill. That's temple. That's some serious ugliness. And it doesn't right at where you think it's the peak. You take a right turn. You take a right turn right, well, you can't really see it. Well, you can really. You see this little right turn right there? You see that kind of thing right where my hand is going? It's a side street that goes over the freeway. You see the 101 freeway? You'll probably remember this. You're going over the freeway. You take a left turn on Bellevue, that side street right after the freeway. And then of course it goes down to Echo Park Pond. But look at this one. Um, right, mile five, right here. Right here, here's the hill going up Temple. Here's the overpass right at the very, very bottom where he starts slowing down. That right, and right there, you're going over the 101, and then you take that left turn and you're going on that side street. It's still uphill. So you got this big sweeping uphill up Temple, and then you take a right turn over the freeway. You're still going uphill. Just when you think, oh, race pace, no, 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 no. You're still going uphill, but then you have this full, a full drop going down right, you see that little drop right there goes down toward Echo Park Pond. So right there is the bottom of the hill and you'll be right at the end of Echo Park Pond um, where that geyser was toward the end of mile six here. So right in here is uh, 
Yeah, right in here, the middle of that straightaway and that side straight, it, it side street, it breaks from going uphill to going really pretty dramatically downhill. And right here, you kind of veer to the right, but right in here is Echo Park Pond. Right in there is the pond. It's the number eight. It probably will say Echo Park Pond. But anyway, <clears throat> halfway down Echo Park Pond, you will hit mile six. This is key. Make sure that you have gone like last Saturday, where you kind of you wanted like five percent slower um, to ten percent slower. Our fastest groups one through four, maybe a little slower percentage than that, maybe two to five percent. You'll see on our pace charts that actually really does work out that way. Um, and slower walkers, uh, same thing. You guys are just like our fast walkers. Our walk six is similar to run one in that your percentage of speeding up and slowing down is not as dramatic as the groups in the middle. Uh, groups five through run, walk five somewhere, five, or run, walk six even, um, are kind of the middle groups, you know, and it, it's a gradual increase in decline of percentage time. You wanna remember, the first three miles, the Rose Bowl half, you wanted to be like, I, when I when I pace led it, it was the Pasadena half, it was a different race, same exact course. I was three minutes behind schedule for a 215 pace led half marathon. Same course, different race. Um, three minutes in three miles. That was extreme. But if you if you if you take it at six miles. Um, it comes out to about the same thing. You wanna be like a 10 minute per mile group by mile six. You wanna be like about five, six minutes behind schedule when you hit that mile six. That's significant. It's only this hill here on third street. And then again on first street, that's the Disney hall hill. And then, uh, then this hill, wait, from this hill right here, from the overpass, this hill right here, from the overpass, from the overpass all the way to here, that's the critical uphill. And look at the pace chart, which I'll show you in a minute, how much slower all of your paces are going to be, especially in that from that, you can see the overpass right there, that street, all the way to the middle of Bellevue, right there, that straightaway, that area, you are gonna be significantly slower. Um, on the other hand, your pace band goes from mile five, which is after the start of the uphill, to mile six, which also includes that downhill from here to here. So once again, your pace band doesn't really tell the exact story. Yeah, your pace band for a 10 minute group may be a minute and a half slower, but it also includes that downhill. That's about a good third of a mile at least of downhill. And you still got a minute and a half slower throughout from mile five to mile six. Get the picture? That is a big, ugly hill that you really maybe two, two and a half minutes slower on for group 10 minute per mile pace, group six. Got it? I only say 10 oh, because it's such an easy number to calculate, you know, 10 times things, it's so easy. Um, so I apologize for picking on group six, but um, uh, which I also used to pace lead many years ago. But that's the critical element of the LA Marathon. Remember how much I was in the Rose Bowl half in the first three miles? Um, um, that's your first six miles. Same thing as the Rose Bowl half. If you weren't confident for the LA Marathon before, if you felt like you lost a lot of pace leaders, if you felt like you lost a lot of people off your group. They are dropping like flies, um, which was something I heard before about the past. 
um, and experienced. I mean, you know, I was with the Roadrunners 10 years. I, I, I know what it's like, I know, I get it. Um, I pace led nine years. Uh, I was the first group of senior pace leaders. Um, I was a senior for eight years. Uh, four of those years, I shared my senior pace leader position with another person because I just didn't really care about the title. Um, I still don't. Um, you'll note I do not wear a coach jacket or any of that. Anyway, um, so that's the key. That's the key. You screw up those first six miles. When you hit mile 20, really even people at mile 13, 14 are gonna start feeling it. That's the key to the LA Marathon. Now, am I done? No, no not even close. But that's the key. For anybody who doesn't have much time to watch this recorded thing, if you've watched this far, you're, you're almost good enough. <laughs>